thank all of you for coming. Uh, you know, there's a multiplicity of things to cover on this topic, so let's just hit a few uh, at the outset. First of all, let me talk about uh, DIS. Uh, I have ordered a, an in-depth audit uh, from DFNA of DIS uh, because when we put that model together, I say we, I was kind of a youngster in the Senate at the time, uh, but when that uh, model was put together, it was uh, probably the appropriate model at the time. Times have changed, things are changing, and we need to determine whether or not there's, uh, that model is still appropriate or if it is not appropriate, how does it need to be tweaked to be appropriate? Uh, is there uh, a way that, uh, that it could be done that's more efficient? And, and to some extent, what prompted this is that the uh, charges uh, for some of these services are across the board are all over the board. I mean, some of them are pretty reasonable and some of them are pretty high. And uh, it's in the taxpayer's best interest, it's in state agencies' best interest, and it certainly is in K through 12's best interest uh, to be able to get all the facts out on the table, make intelligent decisions going forward, uh, whether it be uh, something that we can do in just a few months or whether it be something that need, the table needs to be set and the groundwork set uh, so that the legislature going forward and the next governor going forward will have the kind of information necessary to make uh, good choices and good discussions. Um, as you all know, DFNA does a really good job of, uh, of analyzing everything, and uh, so this will be done in a fashion that will allow uh, transparency and uh, a total objective review of best practices and what works and what could be done better or perhaps what could be done differently. Uh, but we're really here today uh, because we've got a, a very a welcome visitor. Uh, in fact, we've got a couple welcome visitors. You're going to be able to hear from both of them. But uh, Evan Marwell is, uh, is going to be here. He's the CEO of uh, the Education Superhighway. And Arkansas is one of two states that's going to benefit from some enormously uh, profitable uh, expertise uh, at no cost to me, I, I hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that long ago, we were talking earlier this morning, uh, some of you all are too young uh, to remember this, but uh, people like Joe Jett and I remember, it wasn't too long ago that uh, it was a neat thing to have one of those great big bag phones. Uh, and how times have changed so quickly and the opportunity for uh, educational progress and in today's world the need for technology and education is such that uh, we have to leverage and take advantage of opportunities that currently exist. The good news about this is that preliminarily, at least, it looks like we don't have to spend a lot more money. We have to redirect some money we're spending, but, but the ability to redirect some money we're spending will enable uh, Arkansas uh, to leverage uh, further resources that will uh, increase uh, high-speed internet uh, across our state and proliferate it uh, in our public schools. Now, uh, all options ought to be on the table, and I've said this for a number of weeks now, but one of the things that needs to happen, options on the table, is we don't need to preclude K through 12 from being able to access ARON, which is a taxpayer uh, paid for uh, backbone, but that may or may not be all the answers or the only answers uh, for some schools. Schools need to have options, and they need to take advantage of what's best and what's uh, most economically feasible uh, for those respective school districts. Uh, I don't want to steal uh, Evan's thunder, but uh, uh, I will relate one thing he said that uh, I totally agree with. I don't know how anybody can be against in increasing technology for and technological access to improve the quality of education. Uh, it is something that if there's somebody against it somewhere, uh, we need to run them out uh, because it's uh, it's a win-win uh, for everybody involved. Uh, the money that we're currently spending, as I indicated, is uh, such that we uh, perhaps can uh, leverage federal money and uh, really get the best bang for our buck without even having to ask uh, the legislature or the taxpayers for uh, increased revenue at this juncture. It's that good 
uh, of an option laying out there for all of us to see. Uh, we've done some amazing things in the past seven and a half years. And this is one more step of something that needs to occur either now or in the relatively immediate future. Jerry Jones and, and his team uh, together with Ed Franklin and his other committee have done some yeoman's work. Uh, we've got a, uh, a good start on the inventory that exists. Uh, we've got the private sector through Jerry and some of the expertise uh, that they've been, he and his colleagues have been able to provide uh, that allows all of us uh, to kind of know what options exist out there and, and uh, what we ought to be looking at. And this joint effort by so many people uh, is, is something to be applauded. Susan, thank you and the department, uh, Mr. Commissioner, for your leadership in this regard. Uh, and thank the legislature for uh, really being uh, involved in trying to make sure that this uh, uh, goes in the right direction uh, and uh, really benefits all of our students. So, uh, I'm happy to announce that Arkansas is one of two states that's been selected for a pilot collaboration with the Education Superhighway. And as I mentioned, Evan is the CEO of that superhighway. If you all don't have a bio on him, we need to, uh, Matt, you all need to provide the press, the media, uh, a bio because uh, it's extraordinarily uh, impressive. And uh, after he started up lots of companies and made tons and tons of money, he wanted to make sure he gave back uh, to the country that provided him uh, the opportunities. And really, it's provided me the opportunities. You all know my story about education. Education is the reason I'm standing in front of you. Uh, education is the reason that most of us in this room have the opportunity to have the kind of jobs that we've got. Uh, you know, I, I'm the poster child for what America is all about and what educational opportunity can provide for our people. And so I have an obligation, and I think all of us have an obligation to give back uh, to generations to come, uh, to give them the best tools that we possibly have so that they can be successful in an ever-increasing competitive uh, world economy. And so with that, I want to give you Evan Marwell. You all make him extremely welcome to Arkansas. Uh, thank you, Governor Beebe, and thank you, Commissioner Wood, for uh, inviting Education Superhighway here to today. And most importantly, thank you for your leadership and for the leadership of the legislature and all the others you mentioned today um, on the important issue of ensuring that every K-12 student in the state of Arkansas has the broadband that they need for a 21st century digital education. Now, as the governor said, I'm the CEO of Education Superhighway, and I f we are a nonprofit, and our mission is to upgrade the internet access at every public school in America. I founded Education Superhighway two and a half years ago because I believe deeply in the power of technology to level the playing field for America's students and to ensure that every child in this country has equal access to educational opportunity. But without su sufficient broadband, tens of millions of students in this country and over 230,000 right here in Arkansas are going to be left behind without, without access to these game-changing te educational technologies. So for the last two and a half years, Education Superhighway has led a national effort to upgrade the broadband in America's K-12 schools. Our approach has been quite simple. We provide data on the state of broadband networks in our schools and on the availability of affordable broadband to our schools in order to make broadband upgrades for students and teachers a national priority. And as a neutral nonprofit, able to work with all stakeholders towards the common goal of preparing our kids for the 21st century, we've been able to catalyze significant progress towards this goal. Last summer, President Obama announced the Connect Ed initiative to connect 99% of America's students to gigabit broadband and ubiquitous Wi-Fi in their schools by 2018. In February, over a dozen of America's largest corporations committed over $1.4 billion of philanthropic support to accelerate the transition to digital learning in our schools. And just last month, the Federal Communications Commission 
allocated an additional $5 billion over the next five years to ensure that every classroom in America has a robust Wi-Fi network so that every kid and every teacher can get access to the amazing technologies and content that are being developed by our private, private sector. But while the president and the FCC can set the table for every student and teacher to have the broadband they need, actually delivering on their goals requires action at the state and the district level. And that's why I'm excited to be here today. Over the last two months, Education Superhighway conducted the first phase of a comprehensive study of digital learning readiness and K-12 broadband spending in Arkansas. Using audited data submitted by school districts and service providers as part of the Federal Communication Commission's $2.4 billion per year E-rate program, which provides subsidies for broadband for schools and libraries, we analyzed how much internet access each of Arkansas school districts has and the price they pay for their connectivity. And what we found was a state that's actually doing better than the national average in terms of its connectivity, but also a state in which almost half of the school districts in the state do not have the connectivity required for 21st century digital learning, and a state where only one school district, the Smackover School District, where thanks to the foresight of the legislature and the $5 million they allocated for fiber build-outs uh, last session, and thanks to the efforts of SATCO, a local independent telephone company, is the only school district in the state, and it's a rural school district, that meets the 2018 goals set by the president and the FCC for connectivity. So you're doing better than the average in terms of states around the country, but you only have one state that's actually meeting the one, one district that's actually meeting the goals. Now importantly, we also found an incredible opportunity to dramatically increase the connectivity in all of Arkansas's K-12 schools. The state's Arkansas Public Schools Computer Network contract represents over 50% of the state's collective investment in internet access for its schools. In 1992, this was a groundbreaking contract and one of the first state efforts in the nation to make K-12 broadband access a state priority. It was truly innovative back then. Today, unfortunately, Abscan continues to rely on outdated copper technology in a fiber world. And as a result, pays nearly $300 per megabit per month for internet access. So let me put that in perspective for you. The typical cable modem that many of you probably have at your home is somewhere between 10 and 20 megabits. So that would mean you would be paying between three and $6,000 per month for your cable modem connection at home. Certainly that's not acceptable in today's environment. So AppScan, which is spending over 50% of the state's resources on internet connectivity for schools is actually delivering only 5% of the broadband that our schools get today. So let's put that in perspective. The state contract pays over 22 times more per megabit than the $13 per megabit that school districts who buy their broadband directly pay. And over 70 times more than school districts like Van Buren and Two River, it is three to four dollars per megabit. So because of this cost inefficiency, if Arkansas schools had to rely only on the connectivity provided by this state network, 60% of them would have less internet access than each of you have at your home. Typical school has 500 kids, sometimes more. And virtually none of them would have the bandwidth that they need for digital learning, whereas in fact, over 50% of them do today. So that's a problem, but it's also, in our view, a key opportunity. It's an opportunity for Arkansas to lead the nation in meeting the President's 2018 goals by, by simply reallocating the $15 million a year that the state currently invests in school connectivity in a more cost-effective way. And if you do that, you will have the resources, we estimate, to, to meet the President's goal for every, every student and teacher in terms of the internet access that they need. And this is why Education Superhighway has selected Arkansas as one of two states where we will be partnering with both the state government and the, your broadband service providers to develop and implement a comprehensive strategy 
to upgrade the broadband in every one of Arkansas's K-12 schools. We believe that the combination of the state's financial commitment to ensuring that your students and teachers have the connectivity they need, a commitment that is not replicated very often around this country, so it's something you should truly be proud of, as well as the investments that your broadband service providers have made in fiber optic networks around the states, gives Arkansas the opportunity to be the first state in the nation to meet the ConnectEd goals and provide every student with the broadband they need. So today, we're proud to join the governor and the commissioner in announcing a comprehensive program to reach that goal. The first part of our work will focus on expanding our understanding of the state, broadband the state of broadband connectivity in Arkansas schools to include not only the internet access about which I talked today, but also whether or not your, each of your schools have the fiber optic connections they need and the Wi-Fi networks that are critical to getting that broadband to each student's device. We'll also work in conjunction with the Department of Education and the state broadband service providers to conduct a broadband procurement this year that makes dramatically better use of the Department of Education's $15 million annual investment in school connectivity. So that's phase one. In phase two, we will actually support school districts directly, working with them to ensure that they have the fiber optic networks they need, they have the in amount of internet bandwidth they need, and they have the Wi-Fi networks they need. In addition, we will help run a collaborative process with the Department of Education and the broadband service providers to develop the most cost-effective long-term solution for delivering affordable connectivity and technical support to the, K the state's K-12 schools. What the governor talked about in terms of being able to give schools all the options that are available is critical to this but it will take a joint effort by the department and the, and the broadband providers to come up with the best solution. Together, we think these actions will position Arkansas at the head of the class when it comes to providing every child with access to 21st century digital education. And I look forward to reporting back to all of you on our progress and results over the coming month. Thank you very much. And what I'd like to do now is turn it over to, to one of my colleagues, Joe Ferdoso who for the last seven years has run an organization called MCNC in North Carolina. Um, MCNC is one of the leading uh, state education networks in the country, and Joe is bringing a lot of his expertise about how to make delivering broadband to all of our kids a win-win for everybody involved. So Joe, with that. Thank you, Evan. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Wood. Thank you, most of all, Governor. Um, I had the pleasure of spending three days in Little Rock last week. It was my first visit to Arkansas, and I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, a bunch of constituents uh, from, from service providers to members of the legislature to the governor to the Arkansas Department of Education and other community leaders. The first thing I have to tell you is I want to congratulate you. You all have a solid foundation from which to launch an initiative to get high bandwidth, high value connectivity to all your schools in Arkansas. And it's taken cooperative work in order for that to happen. The cooperative spirit here, the work together, has brought you to the cusp of being able to be number one in the nation in, in just a couple of years. So congratulations on your commitment and on your work together. Evan basically said, and I'm not here to summarize it, but I'm going to try to tell you, is that you are investing enough money today in K through 12 connectivity to reach your goal, to have high bandwidth, high value connectivity to every school. You're spending a portion of the money you spend today inefficiently. It's the same situation that we were in in North Carolina five years ago, six years ago, when we undertook this initiative. By turning that inefficient spend into spend on fiber-based connectivity, you have the opportunity to unlock some tremendous economics that will propel the state forward. And let me give you a couple of examples. Your E-rate reimbursement on average for the state is about 79%. That means the federal government matches $4 for every dollar that either ADE or the districts themselves invest in connectivity. You should, with that reimbursement rate and spending the money that you spend today on copper-based services, on fiber-based services, be able, within the next three to four years, 
to get fiber or high bandwidth connectivity to every school in the state. In addition, the FCC has now dedicated $5 billion over the next five years for in-school connectivity, building of school local area networks and ubiquitous wireless networks within school. You have to have the fiber-based connectivity to the school in order to unlock the value in that, but there's a tremendous opportunity for you to get ubiquitous high-speed wireless within every school in Arkansas to support one-to-one -one devices for all your children. You have an opportunity that if you move forward from some of the inefficient spend today to a fiber-based spend, you will propel the state forward. So the governor expressed why we're here. Why is that important? Well, let me give you a couple of stories that, that bring this home to me. When I first started this job in North Carolina, I went to a rural school district. And that rural school district had 12 high schoolers who were eligible to take AP physics and math courses but only four of them could simultaneously because of the connection. How do you decide in a district which eight students aren't allowed to pursue that opportunity? You don't want infrastructure to stand in the way of every student reaching their full potential. You have the opportunity today to very quickly move forward to give every student in your state those opportunities. Thank you. Very quickly, I want uh, Tony to say a few words, and Jerry, I want you to say a few words. Tony? The department, we're just appreciative of the focus that is being brought to this issue, because fundamentally, just as certainly in years past when we needed an interstate system in our country for transportation, we need the education superhighway for our kids today. It's the age in which we are a part of, and if we're doing what we need to do, uh, we've, we've got to provide that. By virtue of this press conference and many other efforts that have been made by Governor BB as well as the gentlemen that have, have joined us today, I'm very optimistic in regard to the fact that we're going to be able to accomplish the goal that has been stated. I think it's extremely important to reference again that we can do that by redirection of resources in the time that we find ourselves in. I think we have the responsibility to the people of the state of Arkansas to do that in the most efficient manner possible. We're extraordinarily appreciative of the efforts that are brought to help us in this goal. And with that, I'll sit down. Good afternoon. I'm Jerry Jones. About this time last year, Governor Beebe called me and asked me to head up a group of Arkansans from all walks of life, all industries, education, academia, industry, in business. And he asked me to work on a problem that frankly I thought we had solved about a decade ago and that was getting ubiquitous high-speed broadband connectivity into our public schools. We brought together a group of about 30 individuals from across the state and we worked quite hard for about six months and came out with a report that ultimately the State Board of Education has adopted as well. There were many recommendations in this report but what we hope this report did for the state of Arkansas is what the mission that Governor Beebe charged us with, catch up, get ahead, and stay ahead. Catch up, get ahead, and stay ahead in education in Arkansas. Everybody in this room knows that education is the most critical issue facing the state of Arkansas. We know that our economy depends upon the educational system that we have in the state of Arkansas. Moving forward with these initiatives and getting high-speed broadband access connectivity to every student in the state of Arkansas is critically important. It is critically important. It's every bit as important as bringing electricity to our state and our rural areas in the 1920s and 30s. It's that important. We can do it. Um, we're not as far behind as we thought. We know that there are ways that we need to go. We need to have all of the options on the table. And I look forward to continuing to work with the governor and the legislature and the Department of Education to find a way to get Arkansas to move forward faster. Thank you. I noticed Governor Jim Guy Tucker in the back of the room who's always been an advocate for this. Governor Tucker, welcome and thank you for your leadership.